Could Arthur be in there? It's way too dark and crowded for me to tell. Majestic arms. Transients welcome. Well, they don't get more transient than me and Doc. Hey, Doc. How's the room? It's a little cleaner than I would have imagined for a depression era flop house. How are your investigations going? I saw him. Who? My grandpa, on his streetcar for just a second. Doc, we gotta find him. Why? Trixie thinks she's got something that could put Kid away, but Artie's the only one who can tell her for sure. I guess he's kind of her tutor or something. Ah, so that's the connection. When your grandfather disappeared from Hill Valley for two months, the bond between him and Miss Trotter was severed, eventually leading to a timeline in which Trixie lost her nerve to betray Tannen. Yeah? We've got to find your grandfather. Any sign of Artie? Haven't spotted him yet. Good news, Doc. Parker's ready to arrest Tannen, and it looks like I didn't go stag to the prom. Wonderful. What about Miss Trotter? I'm still working on her. Why didn't you tell me I'd run into your younger self tonight? Because I don't remember being out here tonight. Clearly, your interactions with my younger self two months ago have slightly altered my personal timeline. I never had the nerve to perform public experiments like he's doing. No matter, those experiments will be forgotten once I've seen Frankenstein. Frankenstein? Yes. Right now, my younger self is fiddling around out there with rocket propulsion systems for his demonstration at the Expo. The thing that'll kick off your scientific career. Exactly. Now, the rockets are a horrible idea, and I'll soon realize that they'll never work. But eventually, I'll wander into that movie theater and see Frankenstein and clear my mind. I've kept the ticket stub from that movie in my wallet ever since. See? Why? Because it's during this movie that I'll have the inspiration for my breakthrough at the Expo. Doesn't have anything to do with reanimating the dead, does it? Not the way you're thinking, no. But during that famous scene when Colin and Clive turned the wheel that raised that shrouded figure into the tower, and that bolt of lightning struck, well, let's just say more than one brain was reanimated that night. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Einstein's a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted, and I'll handle the rest. Where'd you park the DeLorean? I hid it in the DeSoto lot. Nobody's buying cars these days, so it should be safe in there. Hey, who did burn down Tannen's original speakeasy anyway? I still don't know. I'd really like to find out before we go home. I never did get a straight answer about why he came back to 1931 in the first place. It's, uh, personal. When this is over, I'll tell you all about it. I'm gonna hold you to that, you know. Can you explain all this? I'm confused. It's very simple. In the original timeline, Timeline A, the speakeasy arsonist was never caught, creating one of Hill Valley's enduring historical mysteries. Okay. When I traveled back to 1931, I created Timeline B, in which I was misidentified as the arsonist and subsequently killed by Kid Tannen's goons. Einstein came with me, and somehow he ended up in the DeLorean when its failsafe mechanism triggered, sending it back to 1986. Which is where I came in. Precisely. You traveled back to June 14, 1931, creating Timeline C, a world in which Carl Sagan wasn't rubbed out by Kid Tannen. But Arthur McFly was served for the subpoena. And shot by Kid Tannen's goons. Yes. So you jump back in time six hours, creating Timeline D, saving your grandfather's life, but somehow preventing Kid Tannen from meeting his date with justice. Which is why the Tannens were so powerful when we jumped back to 86. Uh-huh. So now we've returned to August of 1931, creating Timeline E, in which, fingers crossed, we'll send Tannen to prison where he belongs. Got it? Sure. Good. One question. What? Can you explain all this? I'm confused. Why are Tannins always such jerks, anyway? Uh, it's hard to say. Rogue Neanderthal genes in their DNA, perhaps.
Okay, I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Edna! What? Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh? What is it? Officer Parker reformed. He has? Really? Uh-huh. I'll need to get a statement. Where can I find him? In the speakeasy. Hmm. See ya. Keep fighting the good fight. Any luck with Einstein? I'm still thinking about it. It's a perplexing spatial conundrum, aggravated by Einstein's understandable skittishness. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. When one Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Have you seen that Frankenstein movie yet? I hear it's pretty inspirational. Not yet. I've been so busy with my rocket car that I haven't found the time. But I'm planning on going tonight. At least I will once I get Einstein down. So you're really going to see Frankenstein tonight? I'd hate for you to miss it. Oh, don't worry. Nothing in the world would keep me from seeing a movie about a mad scientist with delusions of godhood. Cool. I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Don't touch those! They're very sensitive! Sorry. Boy, don't worry, we'll get you down. How? Geez, Emmett, I don't know. I was just trying to comfort him. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Talk to your younger self about Frankenstein. He's really looking forward to it. Oh, I was never worried about that. 
I wouldn't miss that movie for the world. This whole ticket isn't about to disappear. I sort of envy me seeing it for the first time. Emmett's not having much luck getting Einstein off the courthouse. I'm not surprised. Ein is a smart dog, but heights give him the willies. What can we do? Hmm. I've got it. What? Just get my younger self distracted and I'll handle the rest. Okay. I better get back to fixing history. Be careful, Marty. Any luck with Einstein? I'm still thinking about it. It's a perplexing spatial conundrum, aggravated by Einstein's understandable skittishness. Why don't you take a break from Einstein Patrol for a minute? Maybe go see a movie or something. Thanks for the offer, Mike. When one Emmett Lathrop Brown sets his mind on a task, nothing can distract him from his purpose. And right now, that purpose is rescuing your dog. Well, I'll go off and see if I can get some help. You do that. I'll stay here and see if I can think of a way to get Einie off that ledge. Edna! What? You'll be happy to know that your lyrics have pushed Danny Parker back on the straight and narrow. Well, hallelujah! One poor soul saved from the fiery pit. You know, Trixie Trotter sings a song that sounds a lot like your You Should Care. She does? Yeah, but hers is a little more carefree. That's what you get when you sing for booze hounds and gangsters. Hey, I got a hot lead for you. Oh, what is it? Young scientist strands dog on courthouse roof. What? Look over there. Oh, for goodness sake. Mr. Brown. Please, Miss Strickland, not now. Can't you see I've got a rather delicate situation on my hands at the moment? My trial run- Trial run? Public hazard, I call it. And I'm sure my editor will agree. This scientific enterprise of yours represents a clear and present danger to public safety. You know what represents a clear and present danger to public safety? Your singing voice. There's no need to get personal, Mr. Brown. Believe me, I have no intention of getting personal with you. I'm relieved to hear it. Flying cars of all the ridiculous juvenile notions. You mock notions. me, but just imagine. A world in which traffic jams and car crashes are a thing of the past. I might be more inclined to listen to you if your maiden voyage hadn't ended in a crash on one roof and a stranded dog on another. I'm working on getting him down. Heine, <gasps> how'd you get down? Clever dog. Well... Fortune favors you tonight, but I warn you to be more careful in the future. Now, how to get that rocket car back down? Hey boy, how you doing? Good dog. Hey boy, take a whiff of this. <laughs> Gotta love that nose. I've been laying low, officer, but I've gotta go to the pictures once in a while. Hello, Arthur. Officer? I'll take it from here. But, but... We can talk at the Majestic, away from prying eyes. 
Yeah, Einstein, you done good. So, Emmett's gonna get his big idea while watching Frankenstein, huh? I guess that explains a lot about Doc. Hey, Doc, I could use a little help. What's the problem? Should we be worried about your younger self and Ender Strickland? That is a peculiar wrinkle in the space-time continuum, but I'm sure nothing will come of it. I can't possibly imagine myself becoming attached to a woman like that. Is Artie still here? He's in the bathroom. Hey, Artie, open up. You've got a gangster to bring down. Is it time for me to meet this Sylvia? No, it's time for you to meet Trixie. Trixie says she's got something that might be able to send Kid up the river, but that you're the only one she trusts to check it out. Me? What is she? Oh, I know what she's done. Clever. Care to let us in on the secret? Sorry, guys, but if Trixie's keeping it a secret, then so am I. That's all well and good, Mr. McFly, but if you and Trixie are going to collaborate on this evidence, we'll need to arrange a rendezvous. Well, Trixie's chained to kids' speakeasy. So we'll have to bring Arthur to Trixie. Uh-uh. No way am I getting anywhere near that place again. I don't know how you talked me into this. Just stay back here in the shadows and don't come out until you see Trixie. You're sure I'll be safe here? Perfectly safe. We'd never make you take any unnecessary- <gasps> Sagan. Where's Kid? Don't worry. Welcome back, sir. What's it gonna take to get Trixie to squeal on Kid? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? Guess who's waiting in the alley to talk with you? Huddy? The one and only. It wasn't easy to track him down. I had Come to- Come for me, cue ball. I'm taking a smoke break. Atta girl. Hey, you! Huh? Yeah, jerk! I saw you making eyes at my Eunice! Sorry, pal. I don't have time for a fight. Why, you! I'll never get to Carnegie Hall at this rate. All right, fella. I think you're done for the night. Hey, where do you think you're going? Me? Yeah, you. What do you know about this? Uh, nothing. I... Trixie? Break silver cue ball. Whatever you say, babe. What was that? Uh, Trixie? Yeah? What happened in the alley with Arthur? I don't want to talk about it. What about your insurance policy? There ain't no insurance policy. After tonight, I'm tossing it in the furnace and burning it up. Come on, Trixie, can't you tell me what happened out there? No! Then at least give me the evidence you got on Kid. No, I made a deal with myself. As soon as tonight's set is over, the evidence goes up in smoke. Break a leg out there. Thanks.
Artie? <laughs> you missed a hell of a party, buddy. Kid, well, what happened? Oh, you're gonna love this. So, I'm hanging out in the club when all of a sudden I get an urge to drain the lizard, right? I come out into the alley, and who do I see? None other than that scrawny, subpoena-answering rat, Artie McFly. And get this! The little worms whisper in a way I'll conquistadorial-like with my Trixie! Oh, no. Naturally, I pull out Kid Jr. and prepare to put a couple bullets in McFly's head. Which causes Artie's nose to stop bleeding because he's a big wuss. And then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> what? Trixie literally gets down on the knees and begs me to let him live! <laughs> huh? Seriously, down on the knees crying and begging for McFly's life! So, uh, what did you do? What could I do? I fired two shots in the air and told Artie to take a hike. Huh, that was merciful. Hey, I got plenty of mercy. Besides, now Trixie owes me big time. And Kid Tannen always collects on his debts. Always. I guess that's Grandpa's nose blood. <laughs>